everyone. Welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I am Bonnie Krebs, creator of Watercolor the Art Impressions Way, and I am back with another project from our newest release, January of 2020, and I'm going to show you how to put together a composition using our newest birdhouses. So these are big, ornate birdhouses. They're super fun to do, and this set comes with two, two large birdhouses and these three little blue jays. So we're going to use this one right here and one of the blue jays. And then we just need a couple more things. So this also is from the newest release, this flower set. This is uh, becoming my new favorite. I think I say that every time I come out with a new floral uh, set, but I love this set so much. And I'm gonna show you how to use some of these. So we're gonna use these little buds here, the right and the left, and then this little flower here. Actually looks like a little carnation. Uh, we're going to need then from the foliage set, the little grasses and the vine. So we're going to use the vine on that. And then one more stamp, the little branch as an accent. So that is all we need to do this project. Uh, super fun to do and really quick and easy. So let's get started. We're going to start out by stamping the basic image and that is the birdhouse. So long and tall. We're going to use the paper in a uh, portrait. So up and down. And I'm going to stamp it in two colors. So I'm going to ink it in the blue first and then the brown. And I'm just going to go over this whole thing with the blue using the side of my marker. And ink that all up. And then I'm going to go back over it again right over the top with the dark brown. And ink this all up just like so, and I'm going to stamp it off because I don't want it to be super dark. I want We want to see the image, but we, we don't want to see a dark uh, outline around it. So good even pressure, don't, don't stamp it too hard, don't just mash it into the paper, but get a good firm impression and let it be. Okay, so let's go ahead and start out by pulling the color out of the line. So dip your brush in water and pinch it off. That's always the starting point. And the darkest areas are usually where I like to start. And so that would be under this roof line. And this really just kind of pops out. So it's really easy to do this. Just kind of run your brush along those little lines like that. Over here on the sides, these are gonna be a little bit darker than the front. Uh, of course, underneath, we're going to have a shadow and along this post as well. And then run your brush right along the edge of these little lines here. And that will just kind of pop them out. Inside these little openings. You can see when I pulled the color out of this roof, I stayed inside each section, so that's really important to do. Don't take your brush and cross over any of these lines. Just do one section at a time. You're gonna have much better results that way. Okay, there we go. We've got our uh, little birdhouse, kind of a good start. So let's go ahead and add the vines to it. And I'm using a brown, uh, green. And I'm just gonna kind of crawl this, this little vine up. And you know, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can put as much of this in as you want to, or as little. Use parts of it if you want to. And just, you know, that's the neat thing about these stamps is that you can just use different parts of them. I know I say that all the time, but it's so true. Use ink just the tip and you get a totally different look. So now I'm going to come in here and just soften all these little lines. Just dip my brush and dab. And you can see it's starting to look like a watercolor painting. It always looks like a mess when you first stamp it, but it doesn't take long. Once you start adding the water, it just changes everything. Love that about it. And I think that takes the stress away too. You don't have to draw it yourself. And this little vine is in so many projects. So it 
doesn't take a lot to do these things. And I always try to go back to the basics, you know, the basic flower and foliage set because I always feel like if you're starting, you should be able to start with one flower, one foliage set, and be able to do the projects as they come. So even the new projects, if it calls for a vine or it calls for a little filler flower, you've got something that you can start with. Okay, let's go ahead and add some color now to the birdhouse. And I am going to use a bright green. I really love this green. It's super bright. And I think it just adds a lot of interest to this little birdhouse. So I'm just gonna brush this color on. And you want to make sure that you are staying in the, in the lines in each section. So just put this on each area. Don't cross over those lines. That is some bright green, love it. And then I'm gonna mix a little of the dark green with it now and add a little dark color to it, especially over here on the side. So fun to mix colors. You know, it, it um, keeps your palette really simple because you don't have to add, you don't have to have a ton of markers. You can just have a few and mix some really fun colors. I'm going to take some of this bright green now and just kind of add it into my foliage. So this is a really fun thing to do. And you can really change the look of your image if you do this. Just add a little bit of a different green in here. And don't be afraid to just really blend this out. I'm going to add some blue now. This is a really bright blue, 526, one of my favorite colors. I always try to find a way to use this color in my, in my compositions. I just love it so much. Keep it watered down so that it's light. You can always go back and do more. And when you're doing something tall, you know, like this this little birdhouse, it's pretty tall. Uh, never bring the sky over the top. And that that would be that would apply to things like a tree too. If you want a tree to look really tall and majestic, never bring the sky around the top. Always keep the sky down below the tip. And it's just kind of a good rule of thumb and it sort of gives your eye the impression that it just keeps going. And put some of this blue down in here as well. Okay, so I'm going to put some dark blue now onto my palette. This is the dark blue that we started with. And I'm going to really darken these little openings. And you can see I've left that little edge. I've left that open. Don't color all the way over to that little edge. color this in really dark. Same over here and you can see this little edge too. I have not colored that over there. Okay that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna go back over it now with a fine tip. Just a little bit on the inside to make sure that's really really dark. Okay that looks good. And I'm going to take some of this now and just do a shadow underneath this roof. It gives us the impression that this roof is really hanging over the top. And, you know, kind of muddy this up a little bit. You know, never leave it just white. Just going to pull that color over. You can pull some of this green in here. And just kind of muddy it up a little bit. I'm taking a little bit of this green and just putting a little of this color in here. Oh, 
And we can add just a little of this blue also in here underneath these little sections of the roof. Underneath here is going to be dark. And then under here. Starting to take shape. A little bit of blue down here. And then just, this is really tiny in here, but just do a little line under uh, these little perches. I hope you can see that on here. It's just very subtle, but it will really pop this out and make it look like it's three-dimensional. Just that one tiny little thing makes a huge difference. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some flowers in here. I love these new flowers. I love this one. This thing works so well. I'm going to add some color to it now. So I'm going to use two colors. This is a purple and I'm using it on just the fan part of the flower. And I don't need much of the stem. So I'm just going to stamp it in here twice. And then I'm going to ink it again. Just like that and then stamp it twice and re-ink it again so get this little area underneath here too and part of the stem let's get another one in here and maybe just one more i just love these so much so fun The bottom of that little bloom and let's see here where should we put that right there looks good okay now no water onto the stem and you're just gonna kind of add a little water to this little fan part of the flower and let it be don't color it in solid leave some little white spaces and just kind of follow the lines Just like that and let's go on now to the little buds we're gonna do these in purple and green also so just a tiny little buds we're gonna do those in purple and then go back in here and get these and let's do this one these are just little accents so we just put them in at the very end when we're finished. Maybe just a couple more. So cute. And then just touch it with your brush. Just touch it. So tiny and nothing on the on the stem. We don't need to do a thing. Last thing is to just add a little more accent here with this little branch. And we are about finished. We could add a little grass in here if we wanted. Don't have to. Just pull that color up and out. Such a fun little project and so easy. And you know, I like these ones that don't take a lot of stamps too. Because I don't know about you, but I, you know, there's just not a lot of time in the day to spend, you know, an hour or two creating something. And when you can do it in just a few minutes, it's all the more fun to do. And no one would ever guess that you created this in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So we are finished with this project. Uh, one thing left to do, sign and date. And give that away to someone. You're gonna make their day. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I will be back next week with more of the new release from 2020.